So as we have our Agand diagram, it is another presentation that is very, very important. How complex numbers can be indicated on an Agand diagram. What is it? What is the Agand diagram? What is the presentation that exactly we are referring to? Just like a Cartesian plan. Remember when you're dealing with your algebraic graphs, you've got the x-axis and you also have the y-axis. This time, we are going to be representing the x-axis as the real axis. It shows us where the real values are and where the imaginary values are also located or situated, the imaginary axis. So that is all about the Agand diagram. So as we saw from the complex number Z, which is equal to A plus or minus JB, the imaginary part of J, the real, real, this is just a number like we are given three minus J4, something like that. So these are real numbers. We are talking of the real numbers. They're one, two, three, four, and so on. Minus one, minus two, minus three. The imaginary, that is the part of the J. The J, meaning to say if it is 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, it is going to be represented with a J. So this will be J1, this will be J2, this will be J3, this will be J4, minus J1, minus J2, minus, and so on. So with these guys, just like there are points, just like you're marking points to say there is a point which is 3. And there's a point which is two. They meet at a certain point where they meet. That is the principle of a of a of a of an organ diagram. Because you need what is the real and what is the imaginary there. Just like let's say it was one plus j4. Let's say you want to present this on an organ diagram. You just need what is your real term? The a, the real term is one. The real term is one. So it you go at the point where one is in the real terms, you need the value of one. The imaginary J4, you need where J4 is. So you're going to see that as this one is going up, J4 going this, they will meet at a certain point. So it's like where the two points meet, the J4 and the one they meet here. So you just indicate like the four and the one, they're going to meet at a certain point. One and the four, they meet at a certain point. Where they meet, you just indicate uh, that point you mark it. That's your complex number Z, which is given by one plus J4. That's the Agan diagram for you. So you are given whatever that you have on the Agan diagram. All you just need are the X, I mean, the, the part of the real and also your imaginary axis. Your imaginary axis, the part of the J. From there, we can indicate anything. Any, anything. All right, let's say we're given to represent the following on an argand diagram. So we're just going to take this as one, two, three. This is just a sketch, four, five, minus one, minus two, minus three. So there is actually no need for you to behaving like the numbers, to write the numbers like this is one, two. There will be no need of that. Minus J1, uh, minus J2, minus J3, minus J4, minus J5, and so on. This is your J1, this is your J2, your J3, your J4, and so on. And so on. This is your J5, and so on. So let's say I'm given to represent z which is equal to 5 plus j2 how are you going to present this 5 is the real term so you need where 5 is imaginary j2 positive it's positive where the positive is so as you can see guys these two meet in the first quadrant where the 5 is positive and j is also positive they were going to meet in the first quadrant like this if you take them this way so that's the point of our complex number Z, 5 plus J2. You can be given negative values. 
z is equal to minus 1 minus j3 where minus 1 is in the negative the real negative minus j3 minus j3 the imaginary part the j is there minus j3 where are they going to meet in this quadrant so you're just going to take this down and you take this they meet at a certain point there you mark it that's your complex that's your z minus 1 minus j3 so guys we can have a lot of presentation that we are given you are asked to present 0 plus j3 0 plus j3 it means the real we do not have anything there there is nothing in the real z0 we just have a j3 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 is the only part that we have so that one we just indicate a j3 is nothing there it will be just at a j3 there's nothing there same as maybe it's two plus j is zero like that there is nothing about the j so you go to the real term direct at two that is where it's gonna be there's nothing about what there's nothing about the real so it goes straight to two what is it that you are given what is it that you are given you are given z is equal to maybe the square root, whatever that you are given, the square root of 2 minus j square root of 2. By approximation, by finding the square root of 2, what is the value of square root of 2? Square root of 2 is something like 1, 4, 1, 4. So it's in between like 1 and 2 somewhere there. So the real square root of 2, it's a positive square root of 2 in between somewhere there square root of 2 the part of j minus minus it's a minus so minus j square root of 2 maybe somewhere there minus j square root of 2 so it's square root of 2 there minus j square root of 2 they meet at a certain point where they meet you mark a point so that's our z which is equal to square root of 2 minus j square root of 2 you have to take where the value is find the square root of that number so that you can see where exactly it is situated so let's hopefully uh this class can help in the simplification or in the presentation of uh, an argand diagram if you are given a certain complex number that is presented that is written that we have in this format which we are referring to as the standard form our rectangular form so we shall see uh, applications of that and also conversions there later on as we move on till we meet again.